As Canadian athletes arrive in Beijing, Camila Talendabayeva has a message for them. Good luck. I wish all the best for them to bring a lot of gold medals, you know, silver. So, uh, but other hand, they should not forget there's a Canadian citizens in Chinese prison, you know. Citizens like her husband, Hussein Jalil. When they arrested him in 2006, I was three months pregnant. And then now he became a young man. He's 15 years old. He hasn't his dad. You know, he hasn't seen his pictures since he was in prison. Which is, it's really, truly, it's really, really sad. Jalil is a human rights activist and advocate for Uyghurs in Xinjiang, the largely Muslim province that he fled for Canada. The Chinese say he's a terrorist, and that's why he's serving a life sentence. They don't recognize his Canadian citizenship, so no consular visits over the last 16 years. Schellenberg, prosecutor will ask you questions. And there's Robert Schellenberg. He faces the death penalty after appealing a 15-year sentence on charges of drug trafficking. In China, it's not very honor for a lawyer to represent a so-called drug dealer. No honor, but some optimism. Zhang Dongshua says Schellenberg's death penalty coincided with the detention of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, since released and sent home after Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou was freed from house arrest in Canada and returned to China. Politics, he says, frequently influence court decisions in China. It means uh, all the judicial departments uh, need to be led by the party. For now, Schellenberg's death penalty stands and Chalil has vanished. Other Canadians are doing hard time for political crimes and spying as well as religious crimes, yet others for theft, assault and other transgressions. The crimes may differ, but Chinese justice does have one consistency, a 99% conviction rate. Anthony Germain, CBC News, Toronto.